Welcome back to another lava garden show. Um, popped out this morning and had a look at the mountain uh, over here at the end of the road. You will notice that the smoke is rising a huge distance straight up today without making a turn. So wind speeds are almost still at the top of the mountain. There's motion down here at this elevation, but up there it's, it's dead calm going up almost twice the height of the mountain before uh, things begin to bend and they're coming from the north looks like it's going to the south uh, so it's really going to go out over the ocean probably end up almost nowhere that matters too much as far as populations concerned uh, right now at least that's good and you know we may skate this one too as I'd said in the last video and some of the volcanologists are saying same thing at the moment that we're used to uh, uh, volcanoes that erupted about 4,000 feet or lower and so that keeps things right down here to the ground that's in the you know the the local weather at the soil level uh you know this is a whole other story we're, we're looking at a mountain that's almost fourteen thousand, uh and what it's discharging is uh easily almost ten thousand feet above what uh, usually it gets discharged from kilauea here now uh, this did happen back in 1984 but i wasn't around <laughs> so somebody who's been here for a while would know that uh there is much lava lore um, but let's have a look at the volcano well there is not a lot of wind today even high up but a little bit moving from the north Extraordinarily still wind. It's amazing. So still today. Beautiful morning, huh? Well, I see both of the peaks today. Um, yeah, as I was saying about lava lore, um, you know, the, the volcanic activity here in Hawaii, according to native tradition and beliefs, uh, is all attributed to a goddess by the name of Pele. P-E-L-E, -E, and it's not the soccer player. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, anyway, she's in control of the plumbing over here, as far as uh, uh, traditional belief is concerned. And uh, there is so much lore around lava here. Um, there are people uh, who have been here, in, you know, who are native Hawaiians born here, um, who can probably talk story on this uh, for days on end. I know little about the lore personally. Um, you know, a little bit how uh, Pele got and battled with her sister over a boyfriend who got turned into a pig, and I, I believe I got that right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I don't know much about it. Uh, the only lore I have is the stuff that has pretty much occurred in very recent history. Uh, you know, my own personal experience with this has been uh, with the last eruption that went into Pahoa town proper. Um, that be a couple back, <laughs> not the Leilani one before, and uh, you know that 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 was something else because, well, <laughs> the lava was moving towards the town. You know, it was coming at it, and it was coming at him with like a 30 to 50 foot high wall of that junk. <laughs> it is a frightening wall. It's still there where it it's actually stopped right behind the shopping center. Now you can still see it, <laughs> but it, it, it was a scary thing, and it had people on edge. Um, people were moving out of town, you know, and they were coming up here looking for safety. Uh, people were asking me if I had rooms to rent and so on. And, uh, uh, well, we all figured that it was going to do two bad things. Just like right now, we're worried about the main highway here on, on the island. Well, and th at that time, it was the U.S. Post Office in Pahoa and the brand new transfer station for the trash and recycling. Uh, just been finished. M the multi-million dollar project, whatever, how much money they had involved in that thing. Uh, but, you know, it cost. <laughs> and... Uh, 
Well, lava kept coming and coming, and everybody's going, oh, no, it's over with. We're gonna, and they moved everything worth uh, they could get out of the transfer station. The equipment was picked up and dragged out of there, you know, uh, and so on. And they were trying to figure out what are they going to do if the lava crosses the main road through the middle of Pahoa. Well, it never did. <laughs> but uh, on, the, uh, on Halloween... On Halloween, the lava flowed into the Buddhist cemetery in Pahoa, buried the tombstones halfway up on Halloween now, mind you. <laughs> I love bouncing graveyards, you know that. And, uh, and then it went from there and it flowed into some guy's backyard where he had a lot of junk car and rusty iron and he also had some macadamia nut trees. And it just covered that stuff. It burned his junk cars and iron and mac trees to the ground. Uh, covered them all up, <laughs> didn't like the looks of that stuff, I guess, and then stopped and never moved any further. Yeah, if you go to the transfer station today uh, and you can see where the lava came to the bottom of the chain link fence, melted off a couple of links from the heat, dribbled over like a little bit of candle wax in a few places and just plain stopped in a straight line right there, sparing the transfer station. Uh, I don't know, Pele doesn't like Buddhist cemeteries or something. I have no idea what this is all about. But, um, yeah, it's kind of remarkable, actually, where it quit uh, and the way it quit. Uh, sometimes it does that around here. It's a little bit spooky. Uh, you know, but he was ready. Oh, it's a disaster. Oh, no, well, it never happened. You know, right now, we're kind of in that similar situation. Uh, now, this is a little before my time, but there was a flow that came into the town of Kalahana here at the very bottom of the south end of the island there, uh, southeast. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it was a Hawaiian traditional fishing village. It's been there for a long, long time. And, uh, well, the lava inundated from Pu'u -o most of the town, uh, you know, and it, it was just taking things out. Uh, but there was a guy named Uncle Robert. Uh, he's a legend here. And Robert, uh, as the lava was approaching his property, he got out and he sang to it. And I don't know what his songs were, but apparently they were effective because the lava stopped, never entered his property, took out most of Kalapana, and yet today we still have uh, luau parties started celebrating this event down there at Uncle Robert's. You know, he he was still alive uh, when I when I had moved here. I'd met him. He's passed away now but yeah that that was another one of those lava legends you know so we could be looking at another one right here now everybody's figuring man we're gonna lose the main road no one wants to lose the main road that's not gonna be cool uh we all rely on it it's a beautiful highway uh it's the best one we have and uh so i guess with uncle robert in mind perhaps we should all be going out and seeing the flow you know, whatever. Uh, more on the lava then, past the lore. Uh, the lava has hit the flat below the mountain, and that is making it slow down and spread out. And where they thought at the speed it was rolling, that it was going to hit the highway in a matter of just days. Um, now they're talking, oh, a week or more. Nobody really knows. And maybe even not, uh, perhaps. Because as, uh, as it hits that flat ground, instead of being this forceful stream, it starts to get wide and goes this way and that way and kind of backs up and stuff. So we don't know. It, it all depends, too, on how long the mountain produces lava. If the mountain stops producing lava soon, uh, then the flow will probably stop before it hits the road. So sing. <laughs> sing to the mountain. But... Uh, well, there's, there's been a lot of uh, problems with traffic up there on the saddle road. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I saw the signs. They were put up by the county. It's a $1,000 parking ticket uh, for parking along the road up there. And so you really don't want to do this, even though people are still doing it. I don't know. <laughs> Figure the, the cop won't see them or whatever it is. But 
I don't know as far as when it gets to court, because uh, I guess they passed out seven citations yesterday. Uh, perhaps the judges will be somewhat lenient, uh, you know, and they'll reduce or dismiss these fines. I don't know. But they're trying to keep you off that shoulder. Uh, there have been people got hit. Uh, you know, it's like 60, 65 miles an hour out there, and people park on their shoulder trying to look at a mountain. You know, you can, you can get hit real easy because it's in the dark. Uh, driving here at night is something I avoid. <laughs> Whatever possible. I don't mind the trip between uh, Hilo and my house. That's a uh, good road, quite well lit, several towns along the way there, you know. But you get up on that saddle road, whew, the only light you got is the stars. Uh, it is dark and um, it's dangerous. So be careful and follow the laws. They have opened up a brand new viewing area for y'all. <laughs> we had the old saddle road parts of it up there still existing and they'd been gated off you couldn't uh, you couldn't get on to it but yet there is still an old two-lane asphalt blacktop out there wandering through the lava flows well they opened the gates yep they're gonna let you back onto the old saddle road uh, you know it's only one direction it's a one-way flow you know from the west to the east it's the only way you can use this uh, they're gonna leave one lane wide open for traffic and emergency vehicles the traffic is supposed to be uh, you know on, the, on one side to the right I believe is flowing and to the left is parking I think but uh, yeah you get off on the old saddle road now they got a 90 minute limit i don't know how they're going to impose that what chalking tires like the meter maids in chicago no idea <laughs> but you're not supposed to stay there all night if you if you go you got an hour and a half to get your photography and move on so the next person uh, can get in there and that would be a, a very aloha behavior uh you know to leave room for everybody to see this thing it's pretty amazing uh, people who've seen it, whether they're the talking heads on television, whoever they are. I mean, it's like you, the, you see these news people who are undergoing a spiritual experience by being near the mountain. Uh, it's pretty extraordinary. Uh, sometimes I wonder about, you know, as the center of this planet, you know, I, I don't have comparisons with thermometers right now between how hot is the sun or, you know, and how hot is the middle of our planet, but they're both really hot. It's extraordinary that we could sit here up on this little thin crust, you know, and this little creatures running around all pink and brown and yellow and red peoples <laughs> scattering all over the place uh, on the surface and we're mostly just fine you know but every once in a while one of the pimples opens up and that stuff starts coming out of the middle of the planet I mean we got one heck of a custard filled malsada that we're sitting on here man you squeeze this baby and what comes out of the center of it wow um, never think about it much, do we? You know, well, plus, I don't know how we stay in place. This thing is spinning around so fast. Sometimes I think I got to hang on to something. So, yeah, it's a very, very, very interesting experience being alive on planet Earth. Well, I think that about covers the you know, current information <laughs> surrounding the volcano. Um, you know, moving out into the garden, uh, sweet corn is uh, continuing to get ripe more and more and more. Uh, so I will have plenty of sweet corn coming on soon. We've been eating it and it's been delicious. Uh, yesterday, Kevin and I got together here and we dug up all the Wainaku grass runners in a spot in the garden that had gotten weedy and went through, dumped compost, dumped chicken manure and put down sweet onion plants. Uh, anyway. And the tangerines are getting ripe. So here's a look at all that. Well, I had some help here. Kevin came by in the garden yesterday. And we dug up a whole lot of Wainaku roots. There's a pile of them over there. And I got my pile of them over here. And uh, then we were able to spread compost and put in uh, white sweet balding onions. These are Gabriella. I've grown this one in the past and it works quite well here. Um, a little earlier last week I put in some uh, cabbage and broccoli in that row. At the end of the row we have some koba. That's the uh, uh, Japanese multiplier scallion. And a little bit older cabbages over there uh, coming along. And the Roselle is about finished. I'm letting Roselle just go to seed here. Tangerines are coming along nicely. Oh, this is Dancy. 
Uh, it's a uh, classic tangerine, uh, Florida origin. It seems to do very well here. I see it resists scab well. This is very good. Uh, the, the fruit uh, is tasty. Um, and fairly early. This tree was uh, 2017. So it's a five-year-old tree. It's looking pretty good. I'll have yummy Mysore black raspberry to pick this morning. And the achacha trees that I planted from seed back in 2016 are doing quite well. Quite well. Really looking nice. Right. So it is supposed to be a lava garden report. So there's the garden part. Uh, otherwise, can't think anything else other than the weather is beautiful at the moment, but I see dark gray clouds moving our way. Uh, right now, for having a volcanic eruption from the biggest volcano on Earth, the air and the weather here is spectacular. Yes. Yeah, it is uh, that the best blue weather on the planet at the very moment. It's going to change pretty soon. But at least we are not suffering in the fog that we suffer in with Kilauea sometimes. Uh, that's, a, that's a relief. I'm going to remember this. Anyway, y'all have a good time. Thanks for watching. Hang loose. Aloha.